Welcome to Love Bird Lane Makes. My name is Julianne and we're doing a little bit of a different video today. As I haven't done a whole lot of knitting this week, I still have not tried on my striped sweater. I have not put it on some waist yarn and tried it on yet. I have been knitting my socks, however, they are getting done. But because today is the cast on day, well, the start day for uh, Drea Renee Knits, um, knit along that she is currently doing i can't remember what it's called but uh she is hosting a knit along in her ravelry forum boards i thought i would finally cast on the sweater like because i'm going to be frogging a sweater to make us no i'm going to be <laughs> let's go back and reverse that i'm going to be frogging a cardigan to make a sweater yes i'm going to be knitting the throw over sweater so I have worn previously on the vlog my throwback cardigan so that is this one here uh, it basically has this color work motif in it and so does the throw over it has that as well but it is a sweater rather than a cardigan and I think I spoke at some point about how I don't really get much wear out of my cardigans like this literally has got even like barely any pilling on it because it's just not been worn i knit it tried it on it's a, it was a bit small when i first made it because i don't tend to swatch i probably did not swatch for this and uh it didn't fit and looking back at the sizes that um i knit i knit the size four i think in this the sizes are slightly different in the throw over and the throw back but i believe i knit a size four for the throwback cardigan which is supposed to have a finished bust circumference of 46 inches i am currently at 48 inches bust size so looking at the pattern for the throw over i'm going to be doing size six and that should give me uh, i mean i'm not going to swatch i'm just going to use the recommended needles in the pattern which i am a little bit of a tighter knitter so it probably will bring me down a little bit. I won't be getting the full 54 inches that I'm supposed to get for the size 6. But that's okay. Uh, I should be quite alright with that. Because obviously it's going to size itself down a little bit anyway. It is colour work which also sort of snugs itself up a little bit. So if I get somewhere between... Because the pattern recommends two and between 2 and 6 inches of positive ease. If I get somewhere between two and six i'm happy so i'm thinking that if i do the size up because if i had the right gauge i maybe would only do the 50 inch size which is the size five but because i'm not going to bother swatching i'm just going to go straight up to that size six and uh my gauge probably will take care of any too bigness shall we say <laughs> i'm sure that's it. that's perfect english so i have dug out the other balls of yarn i think i'm a bit blown out hang on a second that's a little bit better i pulled out the other balls of yarn that i had just sitting around uh in my stash so i haven't decided if i'm going to frog from the cardigan straight into my new sweater or whether i'm just going to start here because i do have three three full balls and a little bit of um the main color and um i have obviously a lot more of the secondary colors uh the contrast colors than the pattern calls for so i could probably start a brand new ball of these and it won't even <laughs> i won't even need what's currently in the sweater all right i will show you the colors that i am using in this this is all nitpicks wool of the andes so i have marble heather is my main color so it's this gray uh, this marbly heathered gray and then my contrast colors a cream called cloud this black one called coal and this one which is bouquet heather so this is kind of this sort of burgundy ish kind of color it's got a bit of an orange undertone to it but it's kind of a burgundy ish purple with a bit of gold sort of running through it so those are the colors that i'm going to be using 
and I guess I will probably frog this cardigan for the grey as I need it because I, like I said I don't think I'm going to need the contrasting colours uh, because I have so much left um, in the, the balls that I have here that are sitting waiting to be knit so we'll throw that sweater over there and yeah I just thought I don't have a lot to show you guys at the moment I haven't done any sewing again I've just not really been not really been interested to be honest um, it's been hot as I discussed last week I'm just gonna start setting up my needles I'm getting all my cables out so I can find one that's gonna work for the neckline and yeah it's been hot um, I have to do a lot of setup to do sewing because um, as you guys would have seen in some of my other videos I need to pull out a trestle table set up everything every time I want to sew and I did consider doing some sewing today I I have got an idea for a video um, that may help some people with due to questions that I've had um, on how I uh, sandwich my quilts in um, you know especially large quilts I do have quite a large quilt that I am making for my husband's stepmom and uh, I need to sandwich that and get that quilted because it was her 60th last year <laughs> so it's for her 60th birthday but obviously I haven't I haven't finished it it was kind of a, a last minute thought to make her the quilt anyway for her birthday so yeah it just has not gotten done as yet so I've just got my needles together I am using some knit picks again some majestic I think is which one it is the one it is it's like the purples and the greens I don't know if you can even see that but I've just got the interchangeable set so I'm going to cast this on and I thought we could have a bit of a chat because I have mentioned on here before that I have hypothyroidism I actually have been told that I have Hashimoto's which is an autoimmune disease that attacks the thyroid and I <laughs> have been doing some investigating lately uh, about you know health things other things I'm supposed to be doing as you know somebody who does have that autoimmune disease and it turns out that there's quite a bit of, oh, that is my end. I've just ripped out the guts of my, my skein here, but I've got the end here. There's apparently some dietary interventions that you can actually do to help reduce inflammation in your body because inflammation obviously gives a, a, an a, immune response. So please don't take anything that I say here as gospel or medical advice for yourself I'm just doing some investigation for myself because I've, I've had hypothyroidism for a couple of years now or I've been diagnosed for a couple of years and I take uh, levothyroxine the um, synthetic hormone and that is kind of as far as my GP's treatment has gone basically monitoring once a year how my thyroid hormone is going um, whether I need to increase my dosage which I have not had to do as yet and that is kind of where it has stopped and basically I just I had a, a thought the other night because a friend of mine we were at a party and I was complaining that I put on a lot of weight through my antidepressant use uh, which is not something that I still use but um, I did gain a lot of weight while I was on that um, medication and I have been struggling to get the weight back off and I and I sort of just made that comment and she said but you've got like hypothyroidism maybe that is what is causing you know your lack of ability to lose weight so I've kind of dove into a rabbit hole of doing sort of research on other ways to lose weight on with hypothyroidism and it turns out that I my diet needs to be quite uh, severely <laughs> cleaned up because apparently 
as somebody who suffers from hypothyroidism, they suggest that you should be, at the very minimum, gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, and refined sugar-free. And that's good to me, kind of rules out virtually every food that I eat. Um, I previously had, before this week, before I found out, every morning I would have soy milk in my coffee. And apparently soy can interfere with the absorption of um, my medication. And it is also, um, has, a, what is it called, a goiter, I can't remember what it is, I'll put it on the screen so you can see, but apparently it um, also can interfere with the absorption of iodine, which the thyroid needs. So this has kind of left me in a bit of a spin this week, because, yeah, um, carbs have always been a very large part of my diet. Um, I have tried keto before in the past, but was not successful. Um, I found it very, very hard to maintain. And I guess gluten-free doesn't mean I can't have carbs. It just means that one of the major sources of food that I would eat, like I, I tend to eat not fast food, but food that's quick to make. Everything that I eat is from scratch virtually that I make at home. But, you know, a sandwich or like, you know, eggs on toast or something like that is kind of were my go to meals. And now it seems that I'm not actually supposed to be eating that way. And I would love to hear if any of you have um, hypothyroidism and if you've ever been given any advice as to ways to reduce the, I mean, Hashimoto's probably more accurately because that's the autoimmune disease um, that causes hypothyroidism in some people. Not everybody has Hashimoto's, but I have been advised that I do. But I'd really like to know if you've had any advice from your doctors about changing your diets, because I've never had that you know, suggested to me as a treatment option. So I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of feeling a little bit left up in the air at the moment. I do have a doctor's appointment next week. I had a blood test last week um, because I went back to get my next script for uh, my thyroid hormone medication. So I do have another appointment because I was recalled because of that um, blood test. So clearly there's something that she wants to talk to me about. So uh, that will be something that I can deal with next week and I'm thinking I will speak to her then about food interventions. From what I've read, I've read quite a few sources. Um, I've gone to places that are preferably, uh, you know, websites written by doctors, um, YouTube videos by doctors who have their qualifications, you know, um, put out there so that you can see, um, you know, that they're not just some person who's got an opinion. And I'm trying to look for sources that are, you know, like um, backed up by um, studies and things like that to get the, the information that I need. And the problem is that I'm finding is that a lot of the people have got kind of a disclaimer on things like the gluten and the dairy and that kind of thing and the soy is that it will create an inflammatory um, reaction in your body if you have sensitivities to those things. I personally have never noticed any sensitivity to wheat or dairy or soy um, ever. I've, I mean, I've not noticed anything. The soy, I'm happy to not have because um, if it does interfere with the absorption of my medication then there's not much point me having the medication if it's going to prevent me from absorbing it so that's fine I'm happy with that but to have to completely overhaul my entire diet which is probably not necessarily a bad thing but I've always been a little bit adverse to cutting out entire food groups so like dairy being completely cut out is a little bit uh 
seems a little bit crazy and excessive to me. And initially I thought that the dairy restriction was due to um, lactose, but it seems that it's also the proteins that are uh, present in dairy uh, that can interfere and have inflammatory reactions in our bodies. So I'm just going to count my stitches and take a pause and make sure I'm not casting on too many stitches here. And I'm using the long tail cast on. I don't, she doesn't in the pattern itself. I did not read the notes. I probably should read the notes, but the notes don't appear to, uh, the instructions don't appear to have a preference for cast on, but um, I'm just using the long tail cast on. I don't generally faff about with tubular cast ons and things unless it's really a look that I want to achieve. But if you do have Hashimoto's uh, or hypothyroidism and you find you have tried any of these dietary interventions, I'd love to know how you've gone with them, whether you've noticed any difference in your energy levels, um, you know, pain that you may be experiencing. Because I have, if you were a long time viewer, you probably remember that I quite often have a lot of joint pain and um, issues with my hands, my shoulders, my arms often are very very painful and I have gone to the doctor for that as well because I was in quite a bit of pain um, a few years ago and basically I was told that it was like RSI that I'm just using my arms and my hands too much I'm, I'm I don't know I don't know if that's true but that is what the doctors have told me I do have grip issues in definitely my right hand and um, but when the, the problem is, is when I focus on really holding something, I, I can grip. It's when I just want to pick something up or move something around. I just like, I can, I pick things up and immediately drop them. And it's really annoying. <laughs> and the doctor basically just said, I mean, maybe I need a different doctor. I mean, this is a different doctor to the one that I'm seeing currently for my blood test, but I was told that potentially it's just an absent-mindedness thing that I'm just forgetting that I'm holding something and I just let go of it which to me sounds kind of sus I feel like your subconscious mind would have an idea that you're doing something so whether I'm con like I feel like you shouldn't have to be consciously thinking I have something in my hand I have something in my hand to not drop it you know like that just seems a bit crazy to me that that is apparently what you need to do like tell me do you guys consciously think I have something in my hands when you're going to just pick up a jar off your kitchen bench and put it back in your pantry like are you like consciously thinking don't drop the jar you have a jar in your hand I don't I don't feel like that's a normal thing so I think that's probably something else I should investigate, but that I think is probably a separate issue to the joint pain and joint pain can like Hashimoto's can cause joint pain. So I'm thinking that potentially by adopting this different diet, I might reduce or eradicate my joint pain, which would be a good thing. I would be very happy with that. Okay. I have all of my stitches on my needle. So I can start knitting. You know, it's hard. It's really, really hard. And to it's hard to know what to believe as well. And I, that's why I kind of, you know, I thought I would have a chat today about the health stuff because it is something that's really bothering me because I don't know if it's something that I should be pursuing or something that I should not or what yeah so <laughs> i am having a bit of a an experiment this month uh simon suggested that i perhaps do a month without those uh inflammatory trigger foods and just have a bit of a a test to see if i feel better i just realized i'm doing one by one rib instead of two by two that's great i'm just gonna have to tink back my knitting for the moment um, yeah, so he suggested, you know, to potentially do this test month, see whether I feel better 
um, or whether I'm just in the same level of fatigue and, um, you know, pain and things that I was when I began. Um, along with, I guess, getting advice from my doctor next week, see what she has to say. But yeah, that's kind of my health chat that I wanted to have because I do want to, because I've been stewing, I think is the problem, is I've been stewing on it. I've been going over things in my own mind. I've been very solitary going through all of this stuff and just sending all these, shooting off all these random texts to Simon that he's, you know, he's out, out at work trying to focus on his work and his crazy wife is sending him um, texts about these things that um, she's learning. So I thought I would just jump on here, try and get my thoughts out. I mean, even just for my own, my own record of where I'm, you know, coming from and you know basically ask you guys if you've had any experience with that I'm very very kind of a bit lost I suppose at the moment and not really sure what to do so I don't really want to blab on about this the entire time that we are here together um, except I really don't have much else to discuss I've been like I said in my last couple of episodes I have been doing a bit of decluttering around the house. I went through my wardrobe last week and I'm actually going to be doing a video on that. I recorded the whole thing and uh, I will be putting that up on my other channel on my learning to slow channel and um, I'm hoping to get some more videos up over there to to sort of revive that channel a little bit because I'm, I'm hoping to do quite a bit of um, sort of home improvement stuff and I thought that that's probably the best place to put it because as part of the home improvement stuff it's also sort of learning to embrace a slower lifestyle and um, get back into my sourdough baking and have that over there because uh, from what I've read sourdough is actually okay for people who are avoiding gluten who aren't celiac obviously if you're celiac then you probably don't want to mess with it but uh, people who are looking to have uh, lowered gluten diets can have uh, sourdough because it uh, the sourdough um, yeasts and bacteria do break down the gluten in the, the uh, fermented bread so in the dough uh, so yeah I've got to I want to get back into sourdough baking. I do need to make a brand new sourdough starter because Maud, unfortunately, um, I neglected her somewhat and left her out on the bench in the hot weather and forgot about her and she's kind of, she died. So I am going to be making a new sourdough starter, which I will probably uh, document that process for my other channel yeah um figure out what i'm gonna need to call her i don't know whether i'm gonna call the new one something else or or just call her maud 2 i haven't decided as yet uh if you have any cute names um let me know i'm thinking of sticking with m names i don't know why but i'm thinking maybe you know maud 2 or mabel or um something like that uh, i did think of another one the other day now i can't think what it is but yeah, I kind of, I don't know why, I just want to stick with the M names, I think. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to do some more stuff with, you know, sourdough baking. Um, I did have a suggestion to try making some apple cinnamon sourdough hot cross buns. So that is something that I would love to try. I found a couple of um, recipes for sourdough hot cross buns and apple cinnamon hot cross buns and I was thinking I would take the uh, apple portions of how they prepared the apples for the apple and cinnamon one um, and combine that with uh, the sourdough recipe uh, for the dough so that is something I really want to try I do obviously need to get a new starter up and running I'm going to be trying something a little bit different this time last time I basically just used uh, all-purpose flour that I or it's Baker's flour uh, I get a brand uh, I believe that is local I think a South Australian brand it's called um, Wallaby uh, 
quality baker's flour i think it's is the type of flour that it's called so it's not just basic all-purpose flour i don't i don't think i think it's actually you know i mean I suppose all all flour is made for baking but quality baker's flour i don't know but um that was all i used to make my initial sourdough starter and this time i've seen a recipe for a a starter that has a bit of they say whole wheat flour, uh, but they say fresh ground whole wheat flour, which is not something I can do. I don't have a grain mill, uh, so I thought I would just use some whole wheat flour just that I got from the shop and give that a go and see see how I go creating a different type of starter. Uh, I've found a group on Facebook called Sourdough Geeks, which is quite um, knowledgeable. There is a, a fellow on there who is a baker and makes a lot of sourdough bread uh, who's put up quite a few very informative posts so um, I'm going to be following his uh, recommendations for a starter creating a starter and I'm hoping that before Easter I can get some hot cross bun uh, sort of tutorial slash recipe video up over on learning to slows so I'm looking forward to having some new videos up over there. It's been a while since I have updated that channel. I still haven't edited the posts, uh, the uh, videos that I created of us uh, when we first moved in to this house because when we first got the keys and everything I painted through uh, the whole uh, upper story and I, I photographed, not photographed, I videoed uh, that process so I still haven't edited those videos. I don't know if it's worth editing those videos at this point. We've been here for nearly a year and a half uh, but I guess maybe just for old time's sake, just for memory's sake, uh, it might be worth editing those videos but yeah we'll see, we'll see how we go. Uh, there's only so many hours in the day and there's only so much patience that I have for video editing, but uh, yeah, I'll see how I go. And I have not yet wound my yarn for the Everett sweater that I was uh, talking about. I still have, um, you can probably just, just here, um, over on my shelf at the back, which is an utter mess at the moment. Um, I've still got the sweater that has been frogged, the balls of yarn that I wound from the uh, frogged robin sweater that I showed you guys a couple weeks back I think but yeah I just haven't got my um, crazy monkey winder down yet to uh, portion out those uh, skeins and uh, basically get them wound so that I can dye them so I have not done that yet I'm thinking uh, of doing a either a bonus video or having the weekly video be the whole process of winding that yarn showing you guys how I make the skeins and how I'm going to dye those so potentially that is is something if you are interested in seeing that whole process please let me know down in the comments and I'll be sure to film and upload a video showing how I do all of that the crazy monkey skeiners that I have are essentially how I make my minis for Christmas uh, for the advent calendars and I basically dye everything in whole skeins and then I break those skeins down into the 20 gram minis. However, I think I'm going to mix it up this year. I think I might actually purchase myself some uh, pre-made minis because the reason, the reason that I do it in a full skein is because Depending on the circumference of the skein, it will change the way the yarn looks once it's knit. And I don't particularly want my mini skeins to be like small because you're going to get that same color coming around sooner than you would if it was on a larger, um, you know, a larger diameter skein or a circumference diameter I don't know length skein and I I personally do not like the look of pulling and flashing on hand dyed yarn and I try really hard to create colorways that are very varied and do not have the same color 
on every strand all the way around the skein. I want some sort of diversity in in the colours uh, as they go around the skein instead of having exactly the same colour in exactly the same spot every time you sort of get round to that point in the skein. And that is why I've always dyed my Christmas minis as a full skein and then broken them down into the 20 gram minis. So I think depending on the circumference that the minis come in, uh, if they come in full skein circumference size, I might actually just make my life a bit easier <laughs> this year and um, purchase mini skeins uh, to dye for Christmas. So I am going to be doing an advent calendar this year. There will not be a choice this year. Last year that created so much extra work for myself to have three separate um, versions of the advent calendar. So this year there's just going to be one version of the advent calendar. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I know at least one of my viewers here will be very excited about it as well. But that is yet to be advised. I have not nailed down all of the details as yet uh, but yeah I, I'm pretty excited with the overall um, theme of the advent calendar this year so yeah if you are interested and you would like to participate in this year's advent calendar please uh, head down to the description and find my newsletter link because I will obviously be sharing all of the details in my newsletter and um, yeah that's the best place to get the first, the first uh, knowledge of, of what things are going to be and what is going to be included and how much and all that sort of thing. So it's all going to go out into my newsletter before I release that anywhere else. So if you want that info, um, yeah, I will be sorting that out pretty soon, I think. Seeing it's March, um, I usually release my advents in sort of April-ish time, or I did last year anyway, so yeah that will be coming very shortly but i'm <laughs> trucking along here i am knitting the collar i'm not sure how big this needs to be as yet two inches by the looks of it so i'm just going to keep knitting so yeah because i haven't dyed that everett sweater yarn which was going to be the most imminent cast on i thought i would mix things up for you guys and create a different cast on but it's also something that I have been wanting to knit a lot longer than um, the Everett pullover so I'm pleased to have cast on the throwover which is so far so good <laughs> I'm only on the ribbing for the neck but so far so good um, I'm hoping that I can be a little bit more loose with my color work knitting because I feel like cardigan is a little bit I mean, it's fine, but I feel like it could be flatter. I feel like it's just a little bit squishy, like lumpy and bumpy. So I feel like that could be a little bit, little bit smoother. So I'm going to be focusing really hard on improving my colour work um, sort of skills <laughs> in this one. Um, it could also be that it's just, you know, with with wearing and washing that probably would even itself out and take care of itself but because it has not really been worn I've only worn it a couple of times I think I wore it not that long ago on the vlog yeah it's just not had the use and I just really think that because um, pullovers and sweaters are kind of where I'm at these days I just like to throw it on just chuck it on over my head not have to worry about things flapping around or doing up buttons and things like that so yeah, I think this is probably going to get a lot more wear than what the, the throwback cardigan did. So I think I might leave it there. I'm getting a bit thirsty. <laughs> My throat's getting a little bit dry and sore. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed joining me for this cast on. And we will obviously be talking about this in, in upcoming episodes. And I'll be showing you my progress. So... Yeah, if you have any questions or comments about anything that I've spoken about today, please let me know downstairs in the comments. And um, I will be getting back to everybody, hopefully a lot quicker than I have been in the past. Um, I've been a little bit slow the last couple of weeks to get back to people's comments. But um, yeah, I do see them all. I just don't get a chance to, to write back um, all the time. But uh, never fear, I will get back to them. 
and uh, yeah thank you so much for joining me today i uh let me know if you are also in, in joining in the dre renee renee knits um knit along for the march to may cal and uh, let me know what you're making i'd love to love to hear and yeah i guess until next time uh happy knitting happy crafting and i will catch you in the next one bye <laughs>